Hello again doctors and welcome back to my channel. In this video we'll be starting off our series on parasites with a complete list of those tested on USMLE Step 1, as well as an overview and classification according to their physical properties. As always, I will leave my sources listed down below as well as timestamps for where the protozoan and metazoan sections start. So without further ado, grab some coffee, get comfortable, and let's get started. Okay, so just to get our footing with these parasites, let's break them up into categories. Starting off with the two major kingdoms, protozoan and metazoan. Our protozoans are unicellular organisms that follow a cyclopropagative life cycle. That means that they use their host for both reproduction and developmental purposes. The metazoans, or our worms, are multicellular, they're much larger, and they follow a cyclodevelopmental life cycle, meaning that they only use their host for developmental purposes, not for reproductive purposes. So let's go a bit further. Going from left to right, our protozoans are broken up into four phyla. They're categorized by their method of motility. First up, we have the amoebas formerly named Sarcodina, who move by means of their pseudopodia. Next, we have our sporozoans, formerly called AP complexa, who have no true method of, mot of motility. They're gravity dependent and is sometimes referred to as gliding motility. Next up are our flagellates, formerly called Mastigophora, and as the name indicates, they move by means of their flagellum. And finally, we have our ciliates, or ciliophora, who, again, as the name suggests, move via their cilia. For our metazoans, their phyla broken up according to their shape. So we have flatworms, or our platyhelminths, and our roundworms. Now there are two classes of flatworms that we need to know. The first is trematoda, or our flukes. Second is cestoda, or our tapeworms. And finally, for our roundworms, we have nematoda, of which there are sort of two subcategories. There's tissue nematodes and GI nematodes. Now for each of the parasites that I'm going to be going over, I have them color-coded according to their primary site of infection. So what symptom do they primarily cause symptoms in? Starting off with GI is green, blood is red, respiratory is blue, CNS is purple, urogenital is orange, and brown is for tissue pathogens. So for our protozoans by phyla, starting off with our amoebas, aka sarcodina, who move via pseudopodia. There are four that we need to know. The first is Entamoeba histolytica. Next, Naglaria fowleri. Third is Bellamuthia mandriaris. And fourth, Acanthamoeba polyphaga. Next up for our spores, aka AP complexins, there are six that we need to know. Starting off with Toxoplasma gondii. Second is Babesia. Third, Plasmodium. And our last three for all GI parasites, Cryptosporidium, Cystoesospora belli, and cyclosporidium. Our third phyla is our flagellates, aka mastigophora, of which there are five. The first three, Trypanosoma cruzi, Trypanosoma brucei, and Leishmania, who actually all belong to the same family. Fourth is Giardia, and fifth is Trichomonas vaginalis. And finally, the easiest one are ciliates or ciliophora. The one and only pathogenic ciliate that we need to know is Balantidium coli. So B. coli, not to be confused with E. coli. So if you look at their system, symptom profile, for now focus on the red, which are bloodborne or multi-system, they all are actually vector-borne illnesses. Starting off with Babesia, he's transmitted by the Ixodes deer tick. This is the same tick that's responsible for three other pathologies, the first being Lyme's disease with Borrelia burgdorferi, second is anaplasmosis with anaplasma, and third is ehrlichiosis with ehrlichia. Now the next vector is for plasmodium, which of course is the parasite responsible for malaria, and that is transmitted via the Anopheles mosquito. Moving down to our flagellates, Trypanosoma cruzi, which is responsible for Chagas disease, is transmitted by the Reduviid bug, Trypanosoma brucei, which is responsible for African souping sickness, is transmitted via the tsetse fly, and finally, Leishmania is transmitted by the sand fly. So all of the red, all are vector-borne. Now if we focus on the GI parasites, which are green, not only do they share the same site of primary symptoms, they also share the same order of entry, which is ingestion. They all have different forms which, they, which we ingest, which I will go over later. For now, realize that they're all GI parasites and they all share the same route of entry, which is ingestion, typically in feces-contaminated water. And next up for our metazoans, again, moving from left to right, starting off with our flatworms, aka platyhelminths. So trematoda, they're also called flukes. Remember the mnemonic BILL, B-I-L-L, -L, which stands for blood, intestine, liver, and lung. Four letters, four systems. And there are four flukes that we need to know. 
following the same systemic order. So first is the schistosos, second is chondrocinesis and fasciolas, and fourth are lung fluke, paragonemas western mani. Now all four of them actually hit all four systems in different capacities, and I'll get into it when I go over the flukes. The colors are just their primary site of pathogenesis. Next up we have cestoda or tapeworms, by far the largest parasites that we deal with. These can actually be seen with the naked eye unlike most of the rest of these. And they all share the same route of entry, which is ingestion. Starting off with Diphyllobothrum latum, Hyamenolepsis nana, the Tinea species with Saginata and Soleum, and the Echinococcus species with Granulosis and Multilocularis. Notice how they're all green. They all have the same route of entry, which is ingestion, and most of them, except Soleum, primarily infect the GI system. The exception is Soleum, which is responsible for neurocystis sarcosis. And finally, for our roundworms, aka nematoda, I have them categorized into tissue and GI with migratory symptoms, according, of course, to the system where they are primarily symptomatic. Starting off with our tissue nematodes, we have hookworms with ankylostoma and nicantor. Next, we have Pichinella spiralis, Toxocaraconis, Anthocerca volvulus, Loa loa, Ucheraria bancrofti, Mancinella androconulus mediensis. And finally, for our GI with migratory symptoms, I have them in order from most to least GI-like, with Enterobius vermicularis and Trichurus trichuria mainly being contained to the GIT. And our Strongyloides species and Ascaris lumbricordes have more migratory symptoms. Okay, doctor, this one was short and sweet. I hope you found this classification in full as helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned to my channel. I plan to have the Amoebas lecture up in a few days. Make sure you smash that huge thumbs up just down below. Good luck studying, and I, of course, will see you on the next one.